Hi, my name is Lucinda and this is my story. This is my testimony of how I went from someone that was in the New Age, was not a Christian, I didn't believe in God, I didn't believe there was any authenticity in the Bible, <laughs> and to someone who now is a Christian, who absolutely believes in God, who reads the Bible, and I'm someone who has a deep and intimate relationship with God. The reason why I'm sharing this testimony is because God used someone's online ministry of exposing the new age to remove the veil from my eyes. Yeah, to show me the truth. And because of that ministry, I'm able to sit here today and, and share with you my story. So my prayer is that um, even if it's just one person watching this testimony, I pray that God removes the veil from your eyes <laughs> and he shows you the truth and he shows you his perfect love um, and before I begin I also really want to say that um, that I'm not doing this in any way at all to judge anyone to try and convict anyone because where I've come from, I have no one to judge. I just want to share my story. I also wanted to share that um, at times, to some listening, my testimonies may seem outrageous or exaggerated or far-fetched. And I can tell you that's so far from the truth. Everything I'm sharing is completely true and it's just my story. Because God has brought me so much healing and <laughs> he's completely changed me. Um, I never thought that I would be sitting down one day in front of a camera praising God <laughs> and saying that I'm a Christian and that I read the Bible, but here I am. I also want to say that some parts of um, my testimony may be triggering to some of you at some point as I speak of abuse and I speak of trauma, but I really want to reiterate to you that there is hope, that there is healing, that there is restoration. I just wanted to say also, I'm looking over here because I have my notes here and I just want to be able to make sure I remember everything because it's a long story. Um, yeah, I grew up in New Zealand. I was so blessed to be able to grow up in Aotearoa. Grew up in the countryside, going to the beach a lot. Um, yeah, it's definitely a beautiful place, part of the world to um, be brought up in. However, as a young girl, I grew up in a broken home. Yeah, I grew up in a home with a lot of violence at times. Um, problems with alcohol and substance abuse at times. Um, mental illness was rife in my home. And yeah, growing up, I grew up in a lot of chaos. And because of that, as a little girl, I felt very, had like I had little control over my environment and over my body and over my um, who I was. I used to cry myself to sleep a, not a lot at night. I used to run away and climb up trees and go and hide in trees and just sob and cry and just felt like no one was with me. No one loved me and I just felt so alone. And at the age of three years old, I actually declared myself unlovable and unworthy. The home that I grew up in wasn't a Christian home. Um, we didn't speak about God really. There was not really any mention of the Bible. Um, I probably went to church maybe 10 times in my life before I um, met Jesus. <laughs> And yeah, I had very, very limited knowledge on Christianity and what it was about. As a teenager, I was a delinquent at times. I was very much reactive to authority. Like most teenagers, I was a victim of bullying and I also at times became a bully. I was, you know, because I was so hurt and I didn't know how to love myself. I didn't know how to love others and love my peers. And so I really, I hurt other people too. At 17 years old, I felt a lot of pressure from my peers around me to lose my virginity because it was embarrassing 
that I was almost 18 years old and I'd never slept with a boy. And I had very limited knowledge on the sacredness of intimacy and also I had such little self-worth that I just decided to get drunk one night and just do it, do it with a boy that I'd met. However, unfortunately, that boy who I lost my virginity to actually ended up sexually assaulting me. And because I was so broken, to me that was just it was normal or it was my fault that I put myself in that position and it took me years to fully understand and accept that like no that was abuse and I was sexually abused and I denied it for a really long time and because of that you know from that point my life really started to spiral downwards I became very promiscuous very withdrawn I started partying and um, in my early years out of high school, I used to spend most weekends just partying and getting blackout drunk. At points, I was even got really into taking party drugs like MDMA, ecstasy, and a whole lot of others. Um, it was like this escape for me to numb the pain, um, to numb the brokenness, to fill the void like this whole gaping hole that I had right here um, and um, you know at the time I, I didn't actually realize just how broken I was because it was just normal to me like that's how I'd always felt and I just felt like so unworthy and unlovable and that no one would ever truly love me when I was 20 years old I became a vegan <laughs> and I was a very devout vegan um, now we as humans we're called to worship we're made to worship and if we're not worshiping God then we are going to look elsewhere to worship something else and for me that was food and for a very long time in high school I suffered from bulimia However, as a young adult, I kind of, that developed into something called orthorexia, um, which is like a condition, a condition where I was so afraid of what food I was putting in my mouth and what it was doing to my body. Um, because I had grown up in so much chaos and there were so many events happening out of my control, I became like a perfectionist. And I became so self-obsessive and that for me was over food. I became so self-obsessive of food. Um, and I was vegan for a really long time. <laughs> and it got really extreme to the point that I, at the worst it got, I was a fruitarian. And I would only eat raw fruit and nothing else. In my early 20s I started smoking marijuana. Um, that's something that I kind of avoided for a long time because I saw how destructive it could be um, to people around me that I loved dearly and I didn't want to be pulled down that pathway. <laughs> However, I guess lo and behold, here I was um, smoking marijuana and it, um, it quickly became a, a stronghold for me. Yeah, and I became a daily marijuana smoker and even at times, you know, like I felt like I couldn't um, function if I didn't have my daily joint you know and not just once a day but multiple times a day and <laughs> um, as a young child I was always aware of the spiritual realm and that it existed um, I had seen spirits as a young child I had had encounters that I just couldn't deny the reality of the spirit realm However, when I started smoking marijuana, it's like it opened up new realms to me and it was so enticing and I was very intrigued. I was very intrigued about the possibilities and also the possibilities of, of healing. I had read about crystals and how they so-called emit healing properties and powers that help you like achieve more of a peaceful mind and a revitalized state of being. How certain crystals emit different healing powers. 
Um, and if you place them in certain parts of your body on your chakras, then they will help you heal these different parts of your body. I started practicing yoga and this quickly became an obsession for me, an obsession for healing um, and improving my self-awareness and my love and my peace. Yeah, for the first time I felt very in control of my own existence. I felt powerful, I felt superior, I felt like I was my own god and I was, I was doing the healing and I was doing the hard work and, and I was figuring it out all on my own. Because we're so, off, so many of us are really hurt by people in our lives, people that were supposed to love us and protect us, people that we were told to trust. And because of that hurt, you become really um, untrustworthy towards other people. And the idea of laying your life into someone else's hands to take care of you and protect you can be really scary. And that was that for me. So it was like I needed to figure it out all on my own. I was going to be on my own healer. I was leading myself down the pathway of restoration and I was ultimately becoming my own savior. So I thought. I, I also became very self-obsessed with healing my inner child wounds. Being my own rescuer and I believed I could go back <laughs> and alter my reality. I believed that I could go back and nourish and nurture and love that little broken girl. And for a period of time I was also very devout in practicing meditation. Um, Vipassana meditation was something that I got really into. Um, Enlightenment is a huge goal in the New Age to reach. It's like trying to reach a higher state of being, a place where you get to that you're always just content with whatever comes. No, what it, no matter what passes through you, you just are, you've done the hard work and you've gone through the healing that it's, you're just okay and whatever comes, you just let it flow through you from this Zen place. The New Age, um, for me, and I can see it is very much a rebellion of religion. Um, you don't want to be confined to limited beliefs um, and you don't want anyone else telling you what to do a lot of the time. Um, however, the New Age is very broad, it's very deep. There's so many different healing modalities, techniques, so many different roads and pathways that you could go down and at times very contradicting um, and at times I remember feeling kind of confused. However, it's very enticing and you know, in the new age you're working in the spiritual and the thing is, is we are spiritual beings and we're designed to have spiritual spiritual encounters and spiritual encounters with the living God who is spirit and we are made to know him and worship him and know his divine love and perfect love so we go out trying to figure it out on our own trying to find him on our own and looking in all the wrong places and you know it's like we have this God-sized hole in our hearts here and we're trying to find the piece of the puzzle to make it fit so for me, for so long, it was like I was, you know, I was trying Reiki, I was trying yoga, I was trying crystal energy healing, you know, I was trying to make fit food work, relationships, sex, drugs, alcohol, money. And the thing is, is that some of this stuff can give us a temporary satisfaction, but none of it will actually fully satisfy because there's only one that can truly do that, and that is God. Yeah, and because um, none of these techniques and healing modalities and things that I was trying to make fit were actually the missing piece to the puzzle, none of them really stuck for me. Like, they would often lead me down this pathway and I would feel like this temporary satisfaction or this temporary peace for a while and then I would sort of like kind of get bored of it or it didn't resonate with me anymore so I would just toss it to the side and 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 you know try and reach for something else you know and I was often jumping from one ship to the next trying to find what I thought would work 
I was also very flippant in my life. <laughs> couldn't keep a job for more than one year. I couldn't stay living in the same town, country. I couldn't hold a relationship down. I couldn't even keep the same friend groups. And I just kind of viewed myself as this like happy, hippie, like free loving girl that just goes with the flow. <laughs> but the reality was is that I was just so broken. Like I was just so broken and so uncomfortable in who I was and, and so afraid to be vulnerable with people that, um, that I couldn't sit still. And, and I wasn't wanting to be confined to what others thought of me and, and ultimately I was absolutely terrified of rejection. Um, I believed that I was a light worker or a white witch. Um, I believed that I had been called for a purpose, a called for a time to usher in this new era of golden light into the world, a time where true enlightenment was coming to all, a time of goodness and all pain and suffering would be cast out. At the end of 2019, I moved with my family to Costa Rica or Costa Rica. I yeah, I, I was sort of like seeking, I was raw vegan at the time and I was sort of seeking out a community of like-minded individuals who we could go and live together in community and live harmoniously and raise our children together. Um, I was also now at that time practicing shamanic work and I started to go on soul journeys where I actually started to speak with the spirits and the entities or light beings or spirit guides, which I then understood them to be. Early 2020, the pandemic hits, and that was a kind of a, a really confusing and hard time for me because I was all of a sudden like confronted with this fear right in my face of my reality, and it was really confusing to be honest. Yeah, because up until this point, I thought that everything was just we were all of one essence, and everything was. A different form of that essence that it all came from the same source and that it was there was no good or evil it was all just one i had seen a few documentaries online about the darkness of certain parts of the world i'm not going to mention and that was really like hard for me going down that rabbit hole because i couldn't quite comprehend if we came from this one essence then why was the pathway so dark for so many people, so painful for so many people. Like I said, I didn't really believe in evil till that point. But after watching these documentaries, it kind of gave me this aha uh -huh moment. I realized that there is good and that there is evil and it's a spiritual warfare that we're battling. And it just made sense to me. It was such a, a refreshing revelation. In the new age, up until this point, I had never exercised any discernment with the practices that I was involved in. For seven years of deep searching and reading different materials, I never came across anyone encouraging me to use discernment, anyone encouraging me to question the authority behind these sources. Yeah, during this process, I was also going through a really hard time in my personal life. My marriage was breaking up. I was trapped on the other side of the world. I couldn't get home to my family. I didn't have any friends that I could felt like I could really confide in. And I just felt really lost. I heard from some people that were practicing a form of yoga nidra and they would meditate for at least two hours a day every day as part of their journey to enlightenment and they wanted um, me to join them but first I had to be ushered into this this process and to me it just it just felt really wrong it felt like they were trying to invite me into a cult and all of the legalities behind it just didn't sit right with me However, at that time I was a Reiki practitioner and I was doing energy healing and I was doing sound healing journeys. They actually shared with me the dangers of Reiki and energy healing. Just, they just encouraged me to, to um, give up Reiki because it was sort of like a way of building my ego and trying to make me like appear above everyone else. And 
I remember when they said this to me, it made like a lot of sense. It was really, oh, you know what, like when I think about it, it does make sense. What is this Reiki that I'm participating in? But then also <laughs> they seem to be entrenched in, in darkness as well. So it was just kind of, okay, so like confusing. And I was really trying to figure out what is good and what is evil. At this point, I was still practicing shamanic work and speaking with spirit guides. And one night I was sitting outside and I was um, pondering this kind of question, this, this what is good and what is evil question. As I was sitting outside, I heard a voice speak to me and he said to me, Lucinda, do you know where these spirits are from that you're working with? Lucinda, I want you to question them. And I don't want you to just question them. I want you to really question them. And now I know that voice to be the voice of the Holy Spirit. And so I did. I, I listened. And I questioned them. And I didn't just question them, but I really questioned them. Why are you helping me? Why are you talking to me? Where did you come from? And why are you helping me? And what benefit do you get from this energy exchange? And but why, but why, but why? And um, <laughs> let's just say that they got really angry. They did not like being questioned. These beings of which I thought were of pure light and pure love got angry and ferocious and I went through what I now know to be called spiritual warfare where I just had the most horrible demonic attacks where I was having these awful dreams and I'm a mother so you know dreams where I was tied up and they were torturing my son and I couldn't get to him and and at times where I felt like I would been physically lifted out of my body and thrown to the ground <laughs> and it was really scary and really confusing and for so long um, my um, spiritual practices had been so important to me and it was like I was watching all of these foundations that I had put up and I had built just fall to the ground and just crumble before my eyes and there was nothing that I could do <laughs> and I was really scared and I felt so confused and alone and I just shut down spiritually I just didn't want any of it I didn't know what any of it meant anymore. And I just got on my knees one night and I just called out to the universe. <sighs> I don't care who it is, how it is, how it comes, what it is. I just want the truth and nothing but the truth. And, um, <laughs> and a couple of months go by and I'm still going through this, the spiritual warfare. It's not as intense, but it's still very apparent in my life. I'm still feeling confused, I'm not practicing anymore. Yeah, spiritual, not doing any more of these spiritual practices, shamanic work, anything. I've stopped all of it because I, I just don't know anymore. <laughs> and one day I was going through Instagram and I was scrolling through Instagram and I saw a post of someone sharing about Jesus and. To be honest, I actually didn't read the post. I just saw the name Jesus and I kind of thought to myself like, oh wow, like Jesus, like that's a lovely name. <laughs> like that's a beautiful, sweet name. I'd love to know more about this Jesus, but it was just a thought really. Um, there was no pursuit. About a week later, I'm on Instagram one night and someone follows me and he has an online ministry where he's sharing testimonies of people that um, have come from the new age to Jesus Christ and exposing the new age but he just sort of had stuff and information about Jesus and I kind of I didn't really look to be honest I just saw the name Jesus again and I that same thought came to me oh I like Jesus I'd like to know more about him but I'll just kind of press follow and maybe later I'll check it out but I kind of had this voice in my head telling me like not now don't look now and about 10 minutes later 
uh, this person actually messaged me and he said to me, hey Lucinda, like thanks for following me back. I just want to let you know if you need help with anything, if you have any questions, like please reach out to me. And in that moment I felt, oh, like <laughs> I guess I should, I guess I should like look at something then. And I kind of scroll down and I'm in the jungle and Wi-Fi is really slow. So I find a five minute video that will load. Um, and I, yeah, and I come to this video of this man and he's explaining how he used to go on these spirit journeys, these soul journeys and speak to these spirit guides and these light beings. And he did it for years and he took magic mushrooms to do it. And he also, like myself, learned about questioning the spirits and he learned about questioning them with the name of Jesus Christ. And as he started to explain this, I felt this sudden fear come over me. This intense fear. And I just felt in this moment that there were beings and there were entities on me. And they were scared. And I was scared. And... Uh, and I just felt like they were saying, like, she's found out, she's found out, there's nowhere to run. <laughs> and I didn't know what it meant at the time, but I just said, boy, Jesus. <sighs> Jesus, can you save me? And in that moment, all of that fear and all of that pain went and his love came in. It was like, you know what, it felt like I had been swimming underwater my whole life, holding my breath trying to reach the surface and it was like in this moment I finally came to the surface and I took a breath for the first time and I finally found true love And I went to sleep that night and um, I woke up in the morning and I felt like a little girl <laughs> and I was so excited and I didn't know what it meant <laughs> but I'd met Jesus <laughs> and um, I sat down with a friend that day and I said to him like I know this sounds crazy <laughs> But last night I met Jesus and I don't know what that means, but I love this Jesus and I'm going to follow him for the rest of my life and I'm not going to read the Bible anything because that's whack. I'm like, I love this Jesus. And then I'm... And then that night, Jesus, he came into my room and he sat down beside me on the floor next to me. And he held out his arms like this. And he showed me, he showed me the holes in his hands. He showed me the words, they're really there. And he told me, um, 
He told me, Lucinda, it's all true. The stories, they're all true. Everything in that book, it really happened. And I really died for you. And I wrote that book for you. <laughs> and I realized in that moment that this Jesus, I knew this Jesus. I knew his voice. He had been, always been with me. <laughs> and I'd just been ignoring him. I'd just been shutting him out. I just wanted to do it on my own. I just wanted to figure it out on my own. But the reality is, is that, um, that I needed him. I couldn't do it on my own. For 26 years of my life, I'd made such a mess. <laughs> and he never let me go. And <laughs> I think that week, <laughs> I said the name Jesus probably a hundred times because I was so excited because it was like this amazing revelation like God removed the veil from my eyes and everything made sense like it was Jesus like it's Jesus it's Jesus and it's Jesus it's him that I've always been searching for I've been looking for you everywhere Jesus and you've always been here <laughs> And I never knew, like, I could feel these realms of joy and peace and love and that the Savior, the creator of the entire world, he wanted me. And he loved me. <laughs> Broken, Lucinda. I thought I was unworthy. I thought I was unlovable. <laughs> I never knew I could be loved like this. <laughs> and the first time I ever repented in my life, the first time where I got down on my knees and I wept like a baby, and God opened my eyes to it all and I just cried and I cried and I cried. And he showed me that he'd always been with me in the darkest times of my life and the times where I felt so alone that no one was with me. It was untrue because he was in fact there. And it was like all of those burdens and pain and shame was just lifted off and I felt a physical weight was lifted off my shoulders <laughs> and I felt so free. I never knew I could feel this free. <laughs> and I so I got rid of all the new age stuff. I got rid of the books, clothing, <laughs> jewelry, pendulums, musical instruments, cloth, whatever it was, I got rid of it. I burnt it all. God opened my eyes to just how dark it was, how much deception I had been in for so long. And it was just so beautiful because it was so simple. It was so simple. It was just one God and it's just one book. And it's not this complicated thing. We as humans, we try to intellectualize things and we try to complicate things. But, 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 and, and in the new age, there's all these different routes and pathways that we could go down. And, um, <laughs> it's really confusing and it's such a dark deception and we're so enticed by it. But the truth is, is that, um, that God is enough, like him and him alone is enough, Jesus is enough. Something 
I really realized when I met him and I came to him of just how broken I really was. I didn't know and also how none of these new age healing modalities had worked. The hours and hours I had done of silent meditation, energy healing, shamanic work, Reiki, yoga, crystal healing, tarot cards, you name it, I dabbled in it and it had actually, none of it had worked and I realized that it um, had actually left me worse off and it was like God came in and he plucked me out of the darkest depths and he picked me up and he said, Lucinda, you're mine and you belong to me. And he's been bandaging up the wounds, showing me what real love is, what real love looks like, teaching me how to really love myself and love others. He's taught me how to, to forgive everyone that ever hurt me in the past and shown me that it's because that they don't know real love either to anyone here that is um that is listening that is in the new age is practicing witchcraft um i really encourage you to use discernment like i did and to question these healing modalities and to question these spirits and not just to question them, but to really question them and try questioning them with the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And I also want to let you know that you're never too far gone for Him. You're never too deep in the new age for Him. That He loves you. He really loves you. And he'll stop at nothing to rescue you. That you don't have to keep trying and striving to do it on your own anymore. But you can trust him. For so long in my life, I tried to figure it out on my own. I tried to get it right. I was so afraid of being hurt. I was so broken before I met him and you don't have to go down that pathway you just have to follow him and believe him and I promise you from one girl that spent 26 years of her life trying to do it on her own to now three and a half years of knowing him and having an amazing relationship with him, I can tell you it's so worth it and it is the best decision that I ever made. And he promises that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Uh, Father, to whoever's listening to this testimony right now, would you lead them through the depths of the darkness that they're in? Would you save them with your righteous hand? Would you remove the veil from their eyes? Would you show them who you truly are? Would you show them that you're perfect love, Lord? Would you come in and heal the brokenness, the hurting, the pain, the shame, the feelings of being unloved and unworthy? Would you come in and bring perfect restoration and healing? To their lives Lord. Father I pray that you will give them a new song to sing, a new hope to sing and I just pray Lord that you will bring them restoration and healing and joy all the days of their lives. In Jesus name. Amen.